do is yell at each other. You are not friends. No, we're family. Musa, maybe her. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Is the first one better or is the second one better? Let's find out. My name is Brendan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. It's a lot of hype about this movie. Officially, this is the first real summer blockbuster movie coming out the first weekend of May. And Marvel is up. They always take the first spot in May. Uh, it's usually an Avengers film, but now they're doing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Now, this movie is directed and written by James Gunn. He's a very popular director. I like him a lot. I am a fan of his. I've seen all of his previous films, of course, many, many years ago. Um, he did a lot of short films and TV. But his first real feature was a movie that came out in 2006 called Slither. And I do own that on DVD. It is a horror comedy. It is very funny. It's not very scary at all. There is a horror element to it. But it is mostly funny. And if you haven't seen this, it's probably on Netflix. They probably took it off. But I strongly recommend you uh, check out Slither if you do have a chance because it is a great movie directed by James Gunn and written by him as well. And there's also Michael Rooker, um, who plays John Doe in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and 2, which I'm about to talk about. He has a prominent role in this too. Very good movie if you just want something that's weird and silly, uh, but you can also take it somewhat seriously. I recommend Slither. Another movie that uh, um, James Gunn is a part of is that movie that came out in 2010 called Super. It was like a low-budget uh, superhero film, kind of on the lines of Kick-Ass, directed by Matthew Vaughn. That, that movie wasn't low-budget. But just like Kick-Ass Part 1, uh, directed by Matthew Vaughn, I loved that movie and felt it was a realistic superhero movie. I felt the Super was as well a, a realistic superhero movie. I mean, when you're watching it, you can actually say to yourself, I mean, man, I can really see this going down in real life. I can see... You know, this popping off in real life. And that's a good movie, too. I don't own it on DVD or Blu-ray. I should probably go ahead and get a copy just so I can add it to my collection. But that's another movie as well. And now I also have uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, the Blu-ray 3D, Blu-ray uh, digital HD copy of this. Real great movie came out in 2014 and everybody was like, oh my gosh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Who the hell is Guardians of the Galaxy? This is going to be Marvel's first flop. No one's ever heard of these characters before. I mean, they got a walking sentient tree with a walking talking raccoon with a, a guy with muscles and tattoos everywhere and a green person that's in space. What is Marvel Disney? What are they doing? What are they thinking? Nobody's going to go, go see this. It's just going to suck. It's going to tank. And as you know now, um, everybody was wrong. I think that movie grossed like 750 million, maybe 800 million worldwide uh, when it hit theaters back in August of 2014. It also set some records back in August too for the biggest August opening ever or something like that. But, you know, usually big blockbuster movies, uh, when they come out in the summer, you know, that's, you know, the prime time where they're going to make all the money. But with all the blockbuster uh, movies coming out now in the past few years, there's really no, you know, the summer movie season is really coming to an end. It's really kind of, um, you know, stretching out into the entire year. And the reason why I said, I mean, a couple of years you got, well, you had Deadpool last year that came out in February. Logan came out in March. Uh, February of 2018, we got Black Panther coming out. You got Star Wars in November and big movies coming out in November like Thor, you know, Doctor Strange last year and Thor Ragnarok this year. So, you know, there's really no uh, blockbuster season anymore. But when this movie, and I'm going to get to volume two in a second, but I got to lead up to it. But when the first one, Guardians of the Galaxy Part 1, came out, everybody was leaving the theater just like, just screaming, raving of how amazing they thought it was, just how great and different and bold Marvel was, you know, and they, they were just so surprised and couldn't believe it. And it was like a masterpiece, and everybody was blowing up, blowing it up. And me, on the other hand, I did not feel that way. 
um i disagreed with pretty much everybody on just how much they love the film now don't get me wrong i'm not saying that the film sucked or it was bad i just did not love it as much as everyone else and the reason why is, is people gave so much credit to this film is just saying how bold marvel is and i disagree still to this day well as opposed to seeing volume two now but even with Doctor Strange that came out uh, last uh, November, November of 2016, I still think that Marvel is afraid to really dive in and approach these characters the way they really should. I mean, they are not 100% confident. They may be more confident than they were four years ago, but not now. And the reason why I say that is in Guardians of the Galaxy, it was a short, well, it wasn't a short movie. It was um, 121 minutes. Is this 121 minutes? I thought it was like 145. That's probably including credits and something else. I thought it was like 145, 150. No, no, I, I do remember now. Uh, it, 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 it was two hours and I just read the back. But I remember watching the movie and saying to myself, okay, while they rushing, I mean, like, just, just let me set this up. You got a tree, Drax, Rocket, uh, Nebula, Gamora, Peter Quill, characters we've never heard of on the other side of the galaxy, right? I mean, they're not on Earth. So they would think that, you know, I don't know, maybe the general audience is not going to be, you know, so keen on adapting to these characters. What if they don't like them? And when I was watching the movie, I felt like the studio was nervous and had to rush for all the individual guardians to come together to build a team before they properly develop themselves at the very end. Another thing that I absolutely hated about this movie was the villain Drax the Destroyer. God, he sucked so bad. He was probably one of the worst villains in all of the Marvel Studio films and all of the MCUs. In MCUs, MCU, I could not stand him. Um, I love the Kree. I, I mean, I, I've loved the Avengers and Marvel ever since I was a child. And I think back in 2009 or 2010, when they came out with the animated cartoon, not Avengers Assemble that's playing right now, that show is too honky dory and I don't like it, but Avengers Earth Mightiest Heroes. They showed an introduction to the Kree, and that was my first introduction of the Kree, and that was a badass space, uh, or, uh, uh, space race of, of creatures on the other side of the galaxy, and they pose a worthy threat to whoever ran up on them. And when you're watching Guardians of the Galaxy, to see Ronan the Accuser in an animation seem like such a badass, somebody that you just don't want to mess with, and then to see him portrayed in this movie, I just thought they did a horrible job. And he had that blue makeup with the black paint on his face. The actor that they chose to pl play the role was horrible with his voice trying to sound like this. It just didn't sound good at all. I, I, I felt no threat from Ronan the Accuser at all. I also hated Nebula in the first movie. And the reason why I said it like that, I'm going to get to that point later. I hated her. Those were the two main villains in the first one. I hated her. She was always talking like this, like she had 50,000 braces on. I did not like her. Um, so I didn't like the villains. I thought Thanos was shoehorned in. They didn't need to put him in there. They kind of ruined the reveal for me. Um, they didn't even have uh, all the CGI and technology up to par, of course, you know, for my standards. And I can't even see that well. And I can even see all the computer graphics in the screen on the big screen. And I didn't like that. And I also thought that there was some a big issue with continuity in the battles. I will give you one ex prime example is when in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, and I'm going to get to volume two in a second. In the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, when they were going to the old Celestial Head Nowhere, flying in, and everybody was mining, trying to get all the parts and resources out of the old Celestial Head. It was called Nowhere. When they were at that point, Drax the Destroyer was getting frustrated because they did not come closer to their goal. And what he did is he sent a distress call out to invite Ronan the Accuser over so he can fight them, so he can get revenge on his family. Because it was either Drax, not Drax, it was either Ronan the Accuser or uh, Thanos that killed Drax's family, whatever. Dumb decision. But a fight was about to take place. And during the fight, when Drax showed up with all of his bad guys, you saw that uh, Gamora rocket and peter quill got into one of those spaceships and they were flying around you know doing dog chases in the air so that's three characters and there's a total of five 
You also and uh, uh, what's his name? Groot tried to get in one of the spaceships, but a uh, rocket was yelling at him like, "Hey, you, what are you doing? You big dummy! You're too big to fit in." So Groot couldn't get in. So where was uh, Drax the Destroyer? He was fighting um Ronan the accuser the whole time getting this butt book so during the whole fight while everyone else is flying around in the spaceships and Drax the destroyer is fighting um uh Ronan the accuser where the hell was uh where the hell was Groot what was Groot doing Groot wasn't doing anything he could have either been helping uh Drax whoop up on Ronan the accuser or I, I don't know he couldn't get in the spaceship so that right there really bothered me um that's just one of the examples um uh, as far as the continu uh, lack of continuity in the battles in the first one but the overall i did enjoy the film uh it still left a lot of unanswered questions for me like when um what is this guy named the guy that the benicia that told the collector when he was explaining the infinity gem well i, I want to call them gems because that's what they are in the comic book but in the mcu they want to call them stones there was something that he didn't explain too well um you know during that whole exposition scene and even towards the end of the movie i was so confused i'm like okay you know you have this power stone here that destroys everybody you know how is peter quill able to hold it and all the other guardians it was just too many unanswered questions for me and i still did enjoy the movie i may have gave it like a b minus c plus no i'm not gonna say c plus like a b minus you know everybody was just raving about how great it was and i was not raving about how great it was those were some of the complaints i had so going into guardians of the galaxy volume 2 um my expectations were slightly higher but i still wanted to keep them in check uh but just seeing all the trailers coming up to the movie and all the tv spots you know i just wasn't excited as i normally was when an avengers movie was about to come out or like avengers one or avengers part two or when captain america civil war or captain america winter soldier i was just like oh my god i cannot wait to see this movie ah i couldn't you know i just really couldn't wait I wasn't feeling that way with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I don't know why. I just wanted to keep, you know, um, you know, my expectations low. And so, you know, I'm, I'm really glad I did. And a lot of, uh, of the other critics saw this movie like a week or two ago. And I'll address that more towards the end of this review. But I just wanted to say that first that going into this movie, I did keep my expectations low. And what Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I mean, what Volume 1 is about is they're trying to prevent Thanos from, or Ronan the Accuser from, you know, obtaining the Infinity Gems or the Infinity Stones. And they're trying to save the galaxy. As far as the plot, you know, with Guardians of the Galaxy 2, there really isn't one. And that is not a gripe. I like that. And I'll tell you why. It's because when you're not, when there's no real plot or story of the film, the only thing else you can con concentrate on is the jokes and the character development. And Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is a giant character development piece with the whole team and how they get along uh, amongst themselves by themselves and as a group together because they really didn't become a team until the end of the first one so i mean me personally do i really want to see them as soon as volume two pops off them go shooting off in the space into the galaxy trying to do another mission i mean there's nothing wrong with that and that may be enjoyable but me you know i want to see how they are as a team when they're not on a mission when they're just going about their day you know how has this group of characters banded together and is it for the good or for the worse and this movie takes place a few months after the first film and i that you know i am perfectly fine with that so this there's really no plot or story to this movie and that's not a bad thing it really focuses on the jokes and the character development and the way it starts off is this another flashback to the past on earth and i'm not going to spoil it for you here because this is non-spoilers i may come back later and do a spoiler filled review but i like how they set up things you know one thing that was prominent in this trailer is who is peter quill's father star lord's father uh chris pratt's father and of course it's kurt douglas and i'm not ruining that for you that's all i said kurt douglas uh kurt russell that's all over the trailers and he is um what is his name what is his name um i forgot the plan is uh i'm gonna say nebula that's not her name uh man what is um i forgot his name i'm gonna look it up real quick right here because i got the computer right in front of me but 
and I still can't find it or whatever. I'm not going to give up till I find what is this dude's name? I can't believe I forgot. Ego the planet. Ego the living planet. It just popped up in my mind right there. He's Ego the living planet. And so what I in the trailers, one of the first scenes you see is them on that platform trying to uh you know defeat that space uh alien creature interdimensional creature or whatever because he's trying to you know steal the power supply that's one of the first scenes of this movie and i was kind of saying to myself man they've shown this a lot but when you actually see the film nothing is ruined from what they show in the trailers because they give it to you in a completely different perspective than before and me personally in my type of uh taste when when life and death is on the line when there is a battle going down i don't want any jokes going on i I mean if they're like you know uh funny moments that's fine but jokes i really don't care for jokes in serious moments i want everybody involved to be really given it all their god i want given it all they got i want them to be taking it seriously i want to feel as if someone is going to die if everybody involved is not taking it seriously and with this it was a badass fight in the beginning with that creature on that platform but it was also really funny and it had the music going on and the soundtrack and i will say that the soundtrack is not as great as it was in the first movie but i'll touch on that later but it was funny and fun and it also got serious it was just like the perfect mix and nothing was wrong i really did love that i really did love that scene and i don't want to ruin anything for you here so what's the best way that i can say this but after that all it is is really the guardians are going around and just trying to discover who they are and it caters to one character for the most part and that is uh chris pratt's character star lord uh, Peter Quill, it, it, it caters to him and him just trying to find out, you know, where he comes from. And you get to know Kurt Russell in the very, very beginning. And, you know, that's just pretty much the movie. You, you're you're learning about Peter Quill and his heritage and where he comes from. And all the questions that you may have asked at the end of the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, they are answered in this movie and paced out so well. And... One other thing about this movie is there are a ton of jokes and funny moments. And I heard some other critics complaining about there were just so many jokes and the jokes kept repeating itself over and over and over again. There was not one funny moment or joke that I did not laugh at in this entire movie. This movie is hilarious. Even on in the moments where they're battling and people are about to die, they are still cracking jokes and they're still funny moments. And I love every moment of it. I have zero complaints. I was laughing from the very beginning of this movie until the very end of this movie and all in between. As far as it being a funny, comedic, hilarious uh, Marvel Studios movie, I give this a 10 out of 10. Just considering the jokes in the funny moments. So don't jump out of your skin yet because I haven't talked about everything else. So I have no complaints there. But as far as all the Guardians and them separating, I really love the dynamic between Peter Quill's character, Star-Lord, and Gamora. There is a tension of love between these characters, and they just didn't jump into love at the end of this movie or the beginning or any point in time. But, you know, Peter Quill, he's attracted to her. And you see that in the trailers as well for Mantis, because she has the power to feel people's fi- to sense people's feelings. And, you know, they made a joke about that. And, you know, if you're watching this, you know what I'm talking about. But I do love the dynamic between those characters and in volume Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 uh, or Volume 4 if they have a Volume 4 and James Gunn has already been confirmed to come back and do Volume 3. You know, I would really like it if by the end of that movie, this this couple fell in love or even if they didn't, even if they teased you along, you know, that would be fine, too. I also like the addition of Baby Groot. In the first movie, he was big or regular Groot, but then this one is Baby Groot. And I like that they kept on Baby Groot the whole time. And I'm not going to spoil any post credit scenes for you, but I do like they kept on with Baby the whole time because that just gives more stakes to his character. Because at the end of the first one, if he was able to absorb that blast, and, you know, if you know Groot's power, as long as there's a piece of him that you can find and plant it, for it to grow, he can grow back to his normal self. I don't know if he'll still have all of his memories. I believe he might. I need to do my research on that. But if as long as you're able to find a piece of him, he can grow. And most of you know that by now. But if he's able to just to grow back into his full self immediately, 
I mean, there's really, I mean, you know, he's an invincible character, you know, and that's boring. I mean, the, he literally can't die or, the, you know, there's no, there's no stakes to it. So I like that they kept him as a baby because it made it a struggle for the rest of the Guardians team because in the first movie, he was, you know, a threat. You know, if anybody ran up on Groot, they'd probably get their butt kicked, their ass kicked. But, you know, you cannot do that you know you you go if you run up on baby girl you can kick him across the room so you have to use that character in a different way he's small he's tiny he can sneak around get into crevices here and there undetected you know hey if you have a superhero team you do need somebody to be stealthy so i really do like the addition of group uh, baby group there and he was very cute and very adorable i don't collect toys it's been many many years since i have but I do find myself wanting to buy a baby Groot and kind of just, you know, putting them up on my desk or whatever, you know, just to keep me, you know, satisfied and entertained when I'm bored staring at the wall or something like that. As far as Drax is concerned, played by uh, Dave Bautista, uh, you know, his character Groot as well. I do like his arc in the first movie. He's so literal and that's just how his character is. I mean, just somewhat dumbfounded. But you see in this movie that, you know, his social skills and mannerisms have adapted to, you know, just someone more likable and that you can cater to. And that's just because he was been with the Guardians for uh, a while now, a, a number of months. And I don't think that's a number of years, but just, you know, a number of months. So he's learning social interact. He's learning, you know, how to interact with everyone socially. And it's just not as awkward. He understands jokes and doesn't take everything as literal as he did the first time. He somewhat understands sarcasm. I mean, you know, I like that. He's not just the same dumb, you know, big, you know, hulking monster. Well, not really monster, you know, from the first one, you know, he's grown. And I can tell that that's because, you know, he feels like he's part of a family and, you know, he's able to interact with everybody else. Now, at the beginning of this review, I said that I did not like Nebula in the first movie. I didn't, I could not stand her, but I really did like her in this movie because they gave her character more depth than they did from the first film. She, you, you really get to understand where she comes from and why she's so angry and why she has a chip on her shoulder. You really understand why she cannot stand her father Thanos. She hates him and wants to kill him, and it makes sense. You know, this 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 backstories they were telling her, uh, her about, uh, telling us about what her father Thanos had to go through, and I also liked that they did not show Thanos in this movie. He's mentioned a time or two, but they did not show him, uh, which is great because they just need to save him for later. But I really did understand where uh, Nebula was coming from. She still kind of had that annoying voice, and I'm now 100 percent in love with her makeup. But I, I liked her on screen. The first movie, I wanted her to get out of there. The second movie, I'm like, you know, okay, you know, whether you join the Guardians of the Galaxy team or not, I like you as a character now. I understand why you're so angry. And hey, sister, you know, let's try to work it out. Um, Gamora, uh, I mean, she's not as bitter as she was. She was kind of like F the team in the beginning, but she's more of a team player now as well, played by Zoe Saldana. Zoe Saldana, she's great. And Russell Crowe. As uh my goodness why why am I why am I keep forgetting everybody's name I, why is this name even Russell Crowe this is embarrassing I gotta stop in the middle of my review and look up names because I can't remember prominent characters uh Kurt Russell I was saying Russell Crowe and I don't know what else I said before that Kurt Russell I don't know I'm getting my Russells and my Kurts and all that Kurt Russell played by Ego uh he's playing Ego the Living Planet the whole concept was cool. I mean, I really did. I really did like that. There was one element of ego, the living planet, that they did not show. Um, and I, if I think about it, if they would have showed it, it would have. It. I don't know. I mean, it would have been silly, but you know, hey, I mean, this is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume, so they could have. Well, it, it wasn't necessary, and I, I, you know, I don't even miss it in the movie because I'm just not thinking of it now. But him as Peter Quill's father, you know, I really did love all that. You know, it, it was great, um, very creative as well. And, the, you know, I, I'm going to talk about the villain of the film. I'm just not going to mention him because the villain of the film, you kind of see him throughout the whole movie, but you just don't know who he is. And he reveals himself in the end. And it's not a surprise. You can kind of see it coming. But I just like the build up because when you're watching the movie, you could be asking yourself, OK, what is the point of this? Where are they get, where are they trying to get to? You know, what's the point? But you or me personally, I don't even care. 
because I was enjoying all, I was laughing my ass off the whole time and I was enjoying the the um the character interactions and how they grew and how they're coming together. So when that part came, I was like, hey, this is kind of like, you know, a nice bonus for me because <laughs> Excuse me, to be honest with you, there's not much action in this movie. I mean, there's a little bit here and there, but this is a, you know, it's not that much action at all. So if you're going into this movie wanting a lot of action, hey, you may be disappointed. I was going into this movie not really wanting much of anything and came out really enjoying it. But going back to Kurt Russell's character, um, I really did like him. And, oh, something else that I want to touch on is the dialogue between these characters because it was on point and I just want to give credit to James Gunn's writing because every time I ask myself when a certain character would get separated and come back together, this person would do this, I would ask myself, okay, shouldn't you be asking this person this? Shouldn't you be asking this person that? I would be asking this if I was in the situation. And the next second later, a character would be saying that exact line of dialogue. And it makes sense. The, the script made sense. Sometimes, like Batman v Superman, the script just didn't make sense a, a, a ton of times. The script made sense. And, you know, characters were filling in little holes here and there. You know, and it, and nothing was leaking. It, it was all there. And it all made sense. And it was cohesive. Now, just some other things that I like was the race, the sovereign, those gold people. They were pretty cool. Just a bunch of gold people with a bunch of sticks up their butt that thought they was better than everybody. I did like that. I did like the Ravagers. Oh, Yondu. Let's talk about Yondu. Yondu. Love Yondu. Didn't really care for Yondu in the first. It's like everybody that I didn't like in the first movie, I liked a lot better in the second movie. Yondu was great. Yondu was great. Uh, Play by. Why am I forgetting everybody's name? Who, who plays John Du? Uh, Mark Rooker. Yeah, uh, he was cool. He had that extra fin when he was whistling and making his arrow go around. Um, if you know the comments, you know that in the comments, he actually had an air, a bow that he would shoot the arrow and whistle around. But, you know, I guess they didn't want him to copy off a hot guy. And if you can whistle and the arrow can fly around or whatever, what do you need a bow for? You know, I mean, you got to adapt it to the screen. But he was cool. He had character depth as well. And I, I liked him a lot in this movie. And I felt sorry for him. And even him and Rocket had a great scene together. Uh, you know, they were kind of the same character. And they bonded that way because they noticed that they had a lot in common. And when they bonded, I was like, okay, I like this a lot. I mean, you know, it, it was just really good. You know, the dynamic, the dynamic between uh, uh, Rocket and... Uh, Oh my goodness gracious, the, the, the dynamic between Rocket and uh, Yondu was great. The dynamic between Peter Quill and Gamora was great. And also Drax the Destroyer and uh, what is her name? Mantis. And she is, you know, I liked her character as well. She was funny. She was like the dumb version that Drax was in the first movie, but just kind of a different perspective. And I don't, I, I'll go ahead and, you know, I mean... I wouldn't mind seeing um, Drax and uh, Mantis hooking up later on. You know what I'm saying? Having some Drax Mantis babies or something. I mean, you know, I'm not ruining anything for you, but I I, I can see that. And um, another great thing about it is there was a lot of surprises as far as cameos and Easter eggs. There was actually one... A, a, a set of characters I was really surprised to see because I thought that 20th Century Fox on the rights to it. I'm like, wait a minute. How are these characters popping up here? I thought, yeah, that they own the rights, but I guess not. And I'm not going to ruin it for you here. Um, if you're a super duper comic nerd, geek like me, you probably know what I'm talking about. If I come back and do a spoiler review, um, I will uh, talk about that as well. But guys, um, like it was one thing. It was one other thing that I, I, was, I talked about the action. I talked about the plot. I talked about the characters. I talked about how funny it was. Um, I really like how they showed Planet Ego. That was beautiful. The only gripe that I have about the whole movie, and it's kind of it's kind of hard to think about, is one of the characters when he revealed who he was and his origin. I was like, "Oh snap! Oh shit! You are powerful as hell, super duper duper powerful!" Like. Really, really powerful. And with that power, I kind of felt like, you know, well, he wasn't defeated easily. The The person wasn't defeated easily. But now I take that back because, 
Yeah, I, I take that back. I'm not. I'm not gonna complain there because it's making more sense the more that I think about it right now. But the grand finale towards the end, I really did enjoy it. Um, it was oh, uh, well, no, I, I'll go back to there because uh, I, I do want to mention something about Rocket. But the grand finale towards the end was very creative, and I enjoy every moment of it. Seriously, um, I love seeing all the characters fly around with all their gadgets and whatnot. I mean, it was. You know, a funny scene, and it had all the action that I could want. It was, you know, all wrapped up in a nice little bow for me. And if I didn't speak of Rocket earlier, well, I spoke about him when he was getting along with, uh, what you call it, uh, Yondu. But Rocket, I love this character. Uh, I, I mean, I really do. He has that Rocket pack with these guns, but he is still a worthy foe without all of his gadgets and weapons. Because he's super small and agile and he's smart and he knows how to wiggle his way out of everything. And um, I mean, other than that, guys, the only thing I can complain about is that this movie just did not blow me away. I'm not sitting here like, you know, Captain America Civil War or Logan like, oh, the action. Oh, nothing like that. But I mean, I did enjoy this movie a lot better than the first movie. And a lot of, you know, um. A lot of the other critics, they released their review for this like last Monday or the Monday before that. And I saw a couple, I, I saw Jeremy John's review. I saw John Campion's review on, uh, with Collider Movie Talk. I saw John Schnepp and, uh, IGN and maybe one other review. And a lot of the stuff that they complained about in this movie with the jokes and the plot. Uh, also, uh, Charlie did with Emergency Awesome. I don't understand their complaints. I really don't. Maybe because they love the first Guardians of the Galaxy film so much. And I, you know, I, th I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. But I wasn't like, hey, y'all, y'all need to go see Guardians of the Galaxy. The movie off the chain. It was nothing like that for me. But this one, um, I really did enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 much better than Volume 1. Um, I may, well, you know, I'm not saying that I'm just down to the theater to see it again. But I'm not opposed to it either. There are also four post credit scenes, so make sure you stay to the very, very end. And now the hardest part, because I am getting up on like 30-something minutes, is the rating time out of 10. So, if I had to rate the Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, out of a 1 out of 10. Hold on, let me think about this. Let me think about this. And I'm going to tell y'all where it tops in the MCU as well out of like the 14, 15 MC films. Man, this is hard. I'm dancing on, should I give it this or should I give it that? I'm going to give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. Now, um, as far as this does not reach my top three. And in the, my top three in the MCU... Is still Iron Man 1, Captain America, The Winter Soldier, and Avengers 1. Civil War comes in at number 4. Even though the Civil War action was better than any other movies, I'm judging as a whole. Civil War is probably number 4. Um, which puts... Now, I had Ant-Man at number 5 before, but I like... Damn... Do I like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 more than Ant-Man? Do I like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 more than Ant-Man? Yes. Oh, snap. I don't know. Maybe. I got to think about that. I got to think about that. No, I'm going to still say I like Ant-Man. I'm going to still put Ant-Man at number 5. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And number six, that may change in the morning when I think about it more. Uh, Iron Man 2 is the worst. Iron Man 3 is right after that, followed by the two Thor films. Then the Incredible Hulk. Then Captain America, uh, the first Avenger. Let me, let me write this out. Hold on. Y'all been here 30 minutes already. Y'all can, can uh, wait a little bit longer. Actually, do I feel like writing this out? I don't feel like writing it out. Um, wait, where is I gotta? I'm gonna I'm make another video some other time about rating the MC films. I did one at the end of 2014 or 15. I'll just make another one. But guys, yes, if I rate this movie out of a one out of ten, I'm gonna give it an eight point five out of ten. Now, 
before you listen to her song, come on and me pub and everything else, help me out. I'm Brenda Keith Avery. I love movies to death. I want to go to the red carpet premiere of Black Panther that comes out February of 2018. You probably sitting there saying, "Now, Brenda, what the hell are you talking about? Look how many views you got. You barely won't even get a couple of hundred, but that's okay because everybody got to start somewhere." But I love Marvel to death, and I'm black, and I love being black to death, and I love Black Panther as well. My goodness gracious, go look at my Captain America Civil War review that I did a year ago, and you'll see how much I love Black Panther. It is a long shot that I will make the red carpet. It's May 1st today, and that movie comes out February of next year. So I doubt I'll have 100,000, 300,000, million subscribers by the end to where it will warrant me to walk that red carpet. But hey... You got to start somewhere, and I'm not giving up. I want to go. So you can help me out by liking this video a thousand times and sharing it a thousand times. Yes, your hands and fingers will be tired after you do it, but I would really appreciate it. Help me go to L.A., to Hollywood, to see Black Panther on the red carpet. I want to be in there with my black suit on with the black people and everybody else ripping Black Panther. Yes! But anyway, guys. Have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 yet? Did you, were you lucky enough to see an early screening? Do you want to see it? Do it? Did anything I say turn you on or did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up 1,000 times. And if you didn't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below. Why? Just one comment. And still, give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get all the content that I have to provide. And also, guys, look at the bottom of the screen. You see my website. Go to it. Bookmark it. Check out my written reviews. Also, look me up on social media as well. But, guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my non-spoiler review slash opinion on Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.